Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, my fellow Cheebits. Today, I'm here to bring all of you the weekly anime review of Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphan Season 2. Oh my fucking goodness, this episode! Yo! Yo! Like, okay, I mean, Mika is a straight-up motherfucking badass like we already knew this this was already established that this man was a badass but this episode what it showed of his character and what he did in this episode in those first minutes but then towards the end just his character is so good like i mean it's not even the fact of what happened to him and it's not even the fight either i mean the fight oh don't, don't get me wrong i fucking mm, that fight mm, that's fucking beautiful but that final scene with Orga and Mika talking with each other, that development or characterization those two got, that, that was that was beautiful. That, that, it was completely beautiful. But I want to save that thought. I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just talk about that fight. Mika straight up went savage mode. Like, this man went so fucking savage. He, he has his limit, you know, removed, as we know, with his, you know, Gundam frame. Barbatos, he's able to go all out and at the cost of his own body. And the fight is probably the most intense fight we have seen yet from this series of Gundam. Like, this is definitely the most intense fight yet. This man pushes himself to the absolute limit. And the way he just goes so savage up against this mobile armor, just ripping it apart. He loses parts of his own Gundam frame. And he continues to go in and smashing himself up against it. It was just, it was fucking scary. It was like a very disturbing and scary fight. Just seeing... Mika go in like that, not stopping, and he just didn't even give a shit about himself at all. You could see where he was just going in to fight, and it was like almost like he was trying to self-destruct. He was trying to kill himself in the process. And it was just such a crazy demonstration of his power and what Barbatos is capable of, but also Mika too, while he pilots this Gundam frame. And just seeing this man charging in, you just see him go in, he's attacking the mobile armor. As soon as he's done with that, he turns around, he attacks again, he loses a fucking arm and he goes in and attacks again, he loses his weapon, he goes over and grabs someone else's weapon out of their freaking hand and starts fighting with it. I mean, makeup just proved he was a freaking savage. Like, oh my god. I mean, yo, I, I, I've liked Mika as a main character since the very beginning, ever since I saw how cold he was. But this, this episode, damn. Damn! Like, oh my god! Okay, so, make his body situation. Let's talk about that. So, his body, he, he's crippled now. Like, it's not just his arm or his eye now. His entire right side of his body doesn't even work. He cannot move his, uh, his right arm. He cannot move his right leg. He cannot see out of his right eye. So, he has half of his body completely useless like he just can't even use it so he's paralyzed half his body is and that's bad because you gotta realize if you lose an arm and an eye that's gonna complicate a lot of things but also losing your leg on top of that that means half of your entire body you're not gonna be able to walk that's the big thing you're not gonna be able to go use the bathroom that I mean that doesn't seem like you know it's big at all I mean you might not think too much about it but I mean just imagine if you couldn't go out of your way to use the bathroom you go by yourself to go use the bathroom if you know you needed someone else to feed you and all that because you just can't really lift yourself up to start eating because you only have use of one arm I mean you could eat but I mean you just can't lift yourself up if you're lying on the ground you can't really get your ass up I mean you could try to but it's gonna be fucking hard and I mean just imagine not being able to do these simple little things you know Getting up, trying to feed yourself to go use the bathroom. I mean, he's going to need help for everything, and that's that's going to fucking suck. It's going to freaking suck. Just imagine if you couldn't do these little simple things that you do every single day. So Mika, he needs help with everything. He needs help wa going around walking and going around places. And, I mean, he can't even use a wheelchair either because, you know, half his body doesn't even work. So, I mean, he always needs to be carried around. So I feel really bad for him because, I mean, he's in a very sad sad situation but the big thing about it was is that it didn't really bug him as much as i assumed it would i mean if you were a natural and normal person if you lost half your body 
you would be in depression. You, you'd be very depressed, and you wouldn't know what to do with your life, honestly. You, you probably wouldn't. I mean, it may be a rare case you could probably accept it all, but majority of the time, if you're a normal, natural person, you, you're going to have a struggle. You're going to have a lot of struggle. You're going to be having a lot of issues dealing with the life you have now. And Mika, he was just accepting everything. He accepted everything. He couldn't use his leg. He couldn't use his arm. He can't use his eye. And it seemed like he was completely fine with it. It showed that he hasn't changed at all. He still acts like the same person he always did, which actually is even scarier because underneath that surface, it just shows you how broken Mika really is as a character and what he kind of truly believes in. Because the final part of the episode really scares the shit out of me because it shows us what type of character Mika is but also what type of character Orga is. Now, that is something that really got to me in this episode, because it was a Mika-focused episode, seeing what was going on with him, but at the same time, though, there was development going on with Orga and what he really is doing in the grand scheme of things and what he stands as a character and what is happening to Tekadon thanks to him leading. As we know, Tekadon's main objective is always to get to their goal the fastest way possible. That means that many people are going to die to get that goal achieved in the quickest way possible. There's already been many deaths. Many people have died thanks to this. And Orga knows. He knows what he has to do. And even in this episode, he realizes thanks to what they need to do get to the goal the quickest way possible, he's having to throw someone under the bus constantly. He's having to throw Mika under the bus. He's having to pretty much say, you're going to have to die to accomplish what we need to do. And Mika knows this, and he automatically knows that his purpose is only to fight. And when he says, like, I just don't understand it. I can't begin to, you know, understand a world without fighting. Because all I'm meant to do is ride Barbatos and fight. And if, I mean, if there's no reason to fight, I have no reason to live. And that's kind of what Mika was saying at the end of the episode. He's like... Right now, with me losing my arm, my leg, and my eye, it makes everything simple now. Because, I mean, now I won't be conflicted. I won't have to think about the after, you know, once everything is said and done. I won't have to think about that. Because, I mean, when everything's said and done, I can no longer fight. I'll probably die anyway. So, Mika lets us know is, or he lets us know, that he plans on dying. Before everything is said and done, before the goal is completely accomplished, is probably his final act is he's going to die. And that saddens me to see how his character is. He's already willing and accepted his death. He realizes his only purpose is to fight, since now he can't even move around unless he's near Barbatos. He has that attachment to it, this connection, to where he will always have to be near it to be a regular person once again. And so it saddens me to see his character like that. But then going into Orga as well, how he's willing to throw all the characters under the bus just to accomplish the goal for Tekadon, it's scary. His character and his characterization he got in this episode is honestly scary. It's even scarier than Mika, what he got in this episode because he says he will not apologize for what he's doing to Mika. He clearly, he feels upset, he's sad, but he's not stopping it. He's not stopping what they set out to do. He's not trying to negate the path or anything, that take a safer path. He's still continuing to go down that path even though it's reckless and that is scary because you're having it to where he's throwing these people under the bus, for instance, Mika and other people too. So, yeah. Anyways, let's talk about... The Chocolate Man. This man's ambition for what he wants to accomplish and how he wants to use Mika, Barbatos, and all of the plans he has. Just this man, damn. His character definitely is intriguing. Way more intriguing than I thought he would have been. Honestly, I wasn't, you know, that into the Chocolate Man's character in the first season. I mean, he was a cool character, but, I mean, I didn't really care much about him. And, I mean, season two, I'm starting to warm up to him a hell of a lot more. I'm starting to warm up to him, see kind of what his goals are, his ambitions, what he wants to accomplish. And with this episode, with what he talks about, how what he wants to do, and how he talks about Barbatos and Mika and all that as a warrior, and how it was about, you know, the Calamity War and stuff, this man's scary as well. And I mean, there's a bunch of characters in this episode that truly would scare you. Because, I mean, Orga, what he's doing, he's pretty much a freaking monster. I mean, he wants to be the King of Mars and stuff. He, he That's a monster. Like, he's straight up being a monster with what he's having to do. And then also what the Chocolate Man's doing too, it's pretty much a monster as well. He is one. So, yeah, I mean, just some scary things going on with this episode and all that setup with it. And then, I mean, all the stuff with Tewaz as well. I mean, Tewaz, they have a meeting with Tekadon, and Tekadon's like, hey, you can break this cup, 
and then you can come after us and we can, you know, be disowned. You, you can say you don't want us in the family anymore. And Taewa's leader, he's like, hey, if I break this cup, it will only be that. I will come after you. Hopefully you understand that. I'll probably come and kill everyone a part of Tekadon. So Tekadon, they got a fret delivered to them. If you do not continue to deliver, if you continue to do good, you'll be fine. But if something goes wrong, plans go south... You should expect something very bad to happen, and because that's how Taywas acts. Like they look at the results. If you have good results, I'll be fine with it. If you have bad results, well, chopping block. So yeah, tell me your thoughts in the comments below how you felt about this week's episode of Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. It was a wonderful episode, in my personal opinion. You all have a merry Christmas and happy holidays. I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi out.